According to the protocol, the queen is to be chauffeured. However, she's so passionate about driving that she does it whenever possible. The British queen has been driving since she was 19, and she still needs neither a license nor a license plate on her car. She is excluded from the regulations and laws governing the road. Must be nice. Still, all the driving licenses in the country are issued in her name. Same with her passport. She doesn't need it either. Those who never hear their alarm clock in the morning would love to be the queen of the United Kingdom. She doesn't wake up to the alarm clock. Instead, there's a bagpiper who plays outside her window for about 15 minutes. Hmm, waking up to bagpipes? I haven't tried that. The queen is an early bird, waking up at 7.30 every day. She likes to stay in bed for a couple of minutes listening to the BBC. I guess that's after the bagpipe concert. She goes to bed at 11 p.m., sleeping about 8 hours a day. (laughs) I wish I slept that much. Now, having a bath is one of the most relaxing things ever. The queen has a bathtub even in the royal train. If you were the queen, you would never have breakfast in the kitchen. You'd head to the dining room instead. As for the kitchen, it turns out the one in Buckingham Palace doesn't differ that much from a regular one. There's some Tupperware stuff in the palace, too. The queen doesn't eat delicacies every day, as you could imagine. Scrambled eggs and a cup of tea. By the way, Earl Grey is the queen's favorite. The queen tends to add some salmon to her dish, not the tea, but she could have added some truffles instead if it were Christmas. During breakfast, the queen likes to read newspapers. Today's headline says 300 richest Brits, but the queen's name is not among them. Still, the queen does have her personal ATM right where she lives. Buckingham Palace is vast, but the queen usually only uses six rooms. These are a bedroom, a private sitting room, a bathroom, a dressing room. There are also two more special rooms, the audience room, a one-to-one meeting room for visits during the Queen's working week, and the empire room, basically a waiting room. Hmm. If there's a celebration, the Queen has to change her clothes five times a day. As for shoes, there's a helper who shares the same size as the Queen. She wears all new pairs of shoes to make sure they won't feel uncomfortable. Sounds very blister-free. One thing the Queen always does by herself is her makeup. She hires a makeup artist only once a year for her Christmas speech. A queen's handbag isn't just for storing her personal belongings. It's the thing she can give signals with. If she wants to leave within five minutes, she puts it on the table. If she doesn't quite enjoy a conversation she's having, she puts it on the floor, and the staff is there to rescue her. Idleness is definitely not a royal trait. The queen's got a lot of correspondence, and she replies to every single letter. One of her responsibilities is to send letters to couples who celebrate their diamond wedding anniversary. By the way, the queen has already sent more than 540,000 telegrams. Every day, she receives about 200 to 300 letters. Of course, she's got the staff to help her out. But hey, over a half million letters? What? Now, whoever wants to send fan mail to Her Majesty can do that by sending a letter to Buckingham Palace, London. Don't forget to start it with Madam and finish it with I have the honor to be, Madam, Your Majesty's humble and obedient servant. Really. Correspondence is not the only duty the Queen has. She also has to meet with the Prime Minister. A lot. Still, the Prime Minister Day is Wednesday. She must also give her royal assent to the new proposed laws to become real. Yeah, laws are mainly the Parliament's duty, but they work with the Queen on all the laws. The Queen also has meetings in the morning. Sometimes she attends different awards. If she has any important engagement or meeting, the secretary brings her the profiles of people she is to meet. The Queen receives quite a lot of gifts. All of them are added to the list of gifts that the royal household publishes every year. She receives all kinds of gifts, from crochet poppies to brand new cars. Most presents are usually given on the occasion of the Queen's birthday. Besides gifts, The queen can enjoy her two birthdays. It's a very old tradition, started back in the 18th century. The first one is the day when she's born, on April 21st. The second one is the official ceremony, held on the second Saturday of June. The weather must be somewhat better in June, and the queen can celebrate without any problems. In addition to her official duties, the queen does a lot for charity. The royal family supports about 2,500 charities in the UK, and about 3,000 charity organizations around the world. Traveling is another thing that the Queen does a lot. She has visited more than 120 countries so far.
The Queen's lunch can be pretty hearty, including up to four courses, but the portions are relatively small. The Queen loves game and, one important thing, no carbs included to the diet. If you ever get a chance to have lunch in Buckingham Palace, you'll never get potatoes as a side dish. They're a big no in the palace, as well as pasta and rice. Every kitchen employee knows that the royal family's diet has a huge list of restrictions to eliminate any risk of poisoning. Drinking tap water when traveling is not allowed. They also skip any exotic or spicy foods and meals made with raw or undercooked meats, such as tartare. When the queen's not too hungry, she especially likes tuna and mayonnaise sandwiches. Ooh, sounds good! These are pretty easy to cook, so here's the royal recipe. Butter some bread. Cut the cucumber. The slices should be really thin. Add a dash of pepper, tuna, some mayonnaise on top. Voila! The queen is concerned about what she eats, so her daily food should be rich in proteins. Mm. Now, rumor has it the queen loves some Netflix series, especially the one that was inspired by her own life. There's one thing that never changed in the queen since 1989, and it's her nail polish. She sticks to the same pale pink color for over 30 years. More than 30 years ago, the queen's hairdresser wrote a letter to a nail polish brand requesting a bottle of neutral tone polish. She never changed it ever since. Well, 5 o'clock, tea time, and maybe some dessert. The queen always chooses moderate slices of her favorite chocolate biscuit cake. The recipe is more than 100 years old and was first served to Queen Victoria and is still the same. Royal staff also has plenty of rules when it comes to tea brewing. The perfect recipe includes a teaspoon of leaves per one teacup. The water temperature should be 158 degrees Fahrenheit for green tea and 212 for Earl Grey or English breakfast tea. Milk is always added last. Now, the queen should always be invited to dinner elegantly. Remember that for your next invite. People who get the honor to speak with her must learn particular polite phrases. Improvisation and informal language aren't welcome. Royal staff risk being fired if they say, your dinner's on the table. Instead, they should say something like, your majesty, dinner is served. Queen Elizabeth's love for corgis is famous worldwide. It's no wonder that all her dogs got special homemade chef-cooked meals. Ex-chef of Buckingham Palace, Darren McGrady, said in an interview that royal corgis only ate fresh food and had their own menu of home-cooked meals, which included rabbit, liver, cabbage, and rice. Mmm, boy! Dogs aren't the only pets treated like kings in Buckingham Palace. Horses also get their share. Sometimes Her Majesty feeds them by herself. Therefore, not every carrot is suitable for this purpose. All carrots must be perfectly prepared, finger-sized, and peeled. Mm. In recent years, one of the palace jobs advertised was polisher of the Queen's historic vases and irreplaceable paintings at the Palace of Holyrood House in Edinburgh. This duty required any candidate to work 20 hours a week for a paycheck of $10,500 a year. No previous experience needed. The most important quality for a member of the royal staff is to keep secrets well. While providing services for the royal household, staff members can witness delicate information that can be very valuable for the media. Some of these former workers have even written books about their work at the palace. Therefore, today, all new royal employees are forced to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So what goes on at Windsor stays in Windsor.